so that you can go through them quickly. So as we have discussed in our class metabolic acidosis, we always classify them into high anion gap metabolic acidosis and the normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. And as I keep telling you, whenever you get increase in any one or more of the unmeasured anions, there is ketones, there is urate, there is lactate, there is sulfate or there is increase in the phosphate. Any one of them is present. You will mark answer as increased anion gap. So whenever in starvation and diabetic ketoacidosis, you will get increase in the ketone and you will get high anion gap acidosis. Vomiting has no relation associated with low anion gap acidosis is going to be present. A patient presents with fever of four days duration. There are no bleeding manifestations and the vitals are also stable. The hemoglobin shows the HP is low and the platelet count is 20,000. What is the next step in the first hour of management? So whenever the patient has come with fever, we require to give palliative treatment with paracetamol for sure that we want to offer. Since there is no active bleeding, there is no need for platelet transfusion. So that is not the correct answer. There is definitely no role of steroids and antibiotic is also not needed because most likely it is a viral etiology. So there is no role of broad spectrum antibiotic therapy. So correct answer is to only give paracetamol as a palliative treatment in this patient. According to the gold guideline, what is the approximate cutoff value of FEV1 associated with clinically significant resting hypoxemia? So usually, typically like any disease stage 3 and above, when it drops below 30%, then it causes clinically resting hypoxemia also. And then we call it as a case of severe COPD. And then we must consider even lung transplant in this patient. According to the gold guideline, what is the appropriate step in the acute COPD exacerbation? In acute COPD exacerbation, tachypnea is present and desaturation is also present. So patient is having tachypnea plus hypoxemia plus CO2 retention is present. So that means patient is in an acute exacerbation state. This patient most likely cause of exacerbation is the infective etiology and that is why in the treatment, the patient must receive antibiotic, must receive systemic steroid, must receive bronchodilator therapy. So correct answer is to consider A, P and D must be considered in this patient. What is the most common site of the berry aneurysm in the circle of Willis? The berry aneurysm most common is in the anterior cerebral artery and the anterior communicating artery is the most common site of berry aneurysm in the brain. When a 28 year old man comes with involuntary jerky movements with the face and the limbs patient is having, so patient is a young age that is likely to suggest inherited disease. We know that when the jerky movements are present, we are looking at problem and progressive forgetfulness is also there. So along with involuntary movements, the patient is also having dementia or forgetfulness is there. MRI shows there is shrinking of the brain, which is most consistent with a diagnosis of a Huntington's disease in this patient. A patient presents with progressive back pain and weakness in both the lower limb, which finding will support the diagnosis of a compressive myelopathy, that means upper motor neuron lesion. 
So that will be the presence of knee clonus, ankle clonus. There is a severe spasticity in the patient with compressive myelopathy leading to this problem. Others are all LMN lesions feature, not the correct answer. When a patient is admitted with a diagnosis of meningitis and CSF for ELISA shows cryptococcal antigen is reactive, what is the initial therapy? Initial therapy is to start the patient on amphotericin B and flu cytokine and then you can do go for chronic prophylaxis with the fluconazole. So initially we don't give fluconazole. Later for the prophylaxis we can consider the use of fluconazole in this patient. Which of the following drug is not indicated in the management of status epilepticus? All of us know the drug of choice in the status epilepticus is to give IV lorazepam. If it is not working, you can consider IV phosphenitoin. If not phosphenitoin in the modern era, levotiracetam is an important option because of the safety. We can also consider IV valproate. From the time IV preparation is available, it is a potential choice. But definitely there is no role of ethosuximide in an emergency management of status epilepticus. Going on to cardiology. When a 20-year-old athlete died during a practice session, the gross specimen is given below. What is clearly seen? We can see here that there is a asymmetrical septal hypertrophy is present. The asymmetrical septal hypertrophy is suggestive of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In this patient also, as I keep telling you, the most common cause of death is ventricular tachycardia. So in this patient, we must screen the family member to and maybe consider oral amiodaron therapy along with septal ablation procedure to reduce the risk of sudden cardiac death in the family member. When the child comes with recurrent lung infection and subclavian continuous murmur, so I always keep telling recurrent infection indicates pulmonary plethora is going to be there. Continuous murmur, we always think of PDA, especially which is best heard in the Gibson's area. So correct answer is option number D. Which of the following condition does not share the initial mechanism leading to heart failure? Heart failure due to anemia, fever, thyrotoxicosis, all of them are hyperdynamic state leading to the risk of heart failure except for high salt intake which causes increased water absorption into vascular compartment leading to the development of heart failure. So that is a unique mechanism. Which of the following condition will have large P wave or the giant P wave? As I told you, whenever RA is contracting giant P wave in the ECG, all these are direct questions from the notes. Patient with hypothyroidism was recently completed 13 to 14 hour flight. So I have told you long haul flights when the patient takes Due to the pressurized cabin, there is going to be a risk of venous stasis. Along with that, what are the other risk factors for DVT? The presence of oral contraceptive pills, immobilization and smoking. All of them can be risk factor for hypercoagulable state. So A, B, C are correct answer in this situation. Select the major and minor criteria for Jones criteria for diagnosis of rheumatic fever. So erythema marginatum, erythema marginatum is the correct answer. Polyarthralgia is there, carditis is there and prolonged PR interval. Short PR is WPW syndrome. Prolonged PR interval is the correct answer. So correct answer is option number three. 
P and C are diagnosis of rheumatic fever. When a patient comes with recurrent peptic ulceration and nodule in third part of duodenum, we are looking at a gastrinoma or a Zollinger Ellison syndrome. So we are going to go for the serum gastrin level to look for the diagnosis in this condition. When a child comes with the periorbital edema and pedal edema, so we are looking at a case of nephrotic syndrome. Which findings are expected in this patient? Proteinuria more than 3.5, dyslipidemia, hypoalbuminemia, but usually they tend to have relatively preserved GFR. So normal creatinine or the preserved GFR seen in nephrotic syndrome. So correct answer will be A, B and D will be the correct answer here. A child presents with gross proteinuria, not responding to steroid, but histopathology shows segmental sclerosis. Patient has developed a steroid resistant FSGS. Patient is going to be having. A 25-year-old female with SLE presents with weight gain, moon phase. So basically patient is come with the Cushingoid feces. In this patient, you are suspecting Cushing syndrome, you will ask for serum cortisol and ACTH level to look for the diagnosis of Cushing's. Identify the deformity in RA, hyperextension at the DNP is the Bottinier's deformity which we saw. So as you can see questions from medicine relatively very easy from the notes but majority were clinical based question and that is how that you got them all right. Chalo, see you on the other side as successful seat holders of this uh, subject you want. Chalo, all the best.